and welcome to Women's Health. Today, our topic is health disparities. My name is Kathy Ermacher. I am the chair of the Mayor's Commission on Women, and Women's Health is a series of programs by the Women's Commission with the help of the Women's Foundation. Today, I'm joined with, by Josie Rodriguez, and Josie is the administrator of the Office of Health Disparities and Health Equity. Um, and that is a division of public health. And so we want to thank the Department of Health and Human Services today who is paying for our program and we really appreciate Josie being here. Thanks, Kathy. Um, first of all, Josie, let's start out by talking just a little bit about the idea of public health. You, this is a division of public health. What does public health mean? Yes, I think that's a great question because a lot of people don't know what public health is. Really, it's about protecting and improving the health of the entire population. And that involves protecting like the water we drink, protecting us from environmental hazards, disease outbreaks, a lot of different things. Um, you know, a lot of people don't think about uh, how it involves taking out of your trash. So there's a lot of things uh, that public health does. It also assures the quality of our health services. So public health is pretty broad in what we do. Wow, that's really actually quite a few things. Okay, and so your office is the Office of Health Disparities and Health Equity. Correct. Okay, would you tell us a little bit about that and what your role is? Well, first let me tell you where we fit within a Nebraska Health and Human Services system. We are within the Division of Public Health, like you said. And the Division of Public Health, um, in addition to our office that's under that, we work with um, uh, maternal child health, uh, women, infant, and children's program. They also work with Every Woman Matters program that does like breast screenings. Um, also works to license and regulate um, healthcare facilities and healthcare providers. So we do a lot of that within the division. Our chief medical officer is Dr. Joe Aserno. He is um, also the director of the Division of Public Health. And as I said earlier, our office falls under that. So what we do is that we really um, improve the health outcomes for racial um, and ethnic minorities in Nebraska. Okay. Our overall mission is health equity for all Nebraskans because there is there is a huge disparity among racial and ethnic minorities and um, the white population in Nebraska. Okay, okay. So really when we talk about health disparities for our audience, we're talking about the differences between health and health outcomes for the racial minorities and ethnic minorities. And really we also look at um, other populations like disabled individuals. Okay. So when we talk about health disparities, we're trying to broaden that a little bit. Our office primarily focuses on racial and ethnic minorities, but within our division, we also have the um, um, uh, office for um, the um, disabled okay. as well. Okay. So Let's talk just a little bit about some information that you have accumulated. And let's first of all, since we're gonna be talking about racial, racial and ethnic minorities, let's talk about first of all, what the numbers are. For mm -hmm. example, statistically, what are we looking at for the numbers of the overall population? And then we'll move into talking about the disparities yes, in the health outcomes. Good. But let's first of all talk about how diverse is Nebraska? You know, it's very diverse. A lot of people don't realize it, but um, Nebraska's population is approximately about 1.8 million. Minority population is about 17.9% of that uh, population, that right? of the entire Nebraska population. Uh, in 1990, the Census Bureau projected that we would hit uh, 15% minority population by 2025. And I just stated what we're at right now is 17.9 and we're in right. 2010 right. or 13. Yeah, <laughs> but that yeah. was in 2010. Sure, sure. In so 2010. it has, it has uh, increased significantly. And really, if you look at the entire state, we have minority populations all across the state, but really primarily the majority populations are uh, Grand Island, Lincoln, Omaha, South Sioux City, uh, we have some in Dawson County, we have some Clarence Scott's Bluff, uh -huh. and then you have some in the eastern, um, southeast part of the state as so well. So primarily in, in what we would consider the concentrated populations, in other words, the larger cities and Correct. the larger towns. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And proportionately, what is the largest ethnic minority? Um, Hispanic is the largest, is yes. Hispanic. Yes. That, okay. yes. They, um, the Hispanic population is, um, 
ha had the largest increase of 77 um, percent of wow. an increase between 2000 and 2010. So in just that short of a period of time there the numbers increased 77 yes. percent. Yes exactly wow. they're the highest and actually the minority population between 2000 and 2010 grew 50 percent so the population in 2000 was about roughly 215,000 and now we're at 517,000. Wow that's incredible. Yeah, yeah. Well I think that a lot of people just assume I mean from the United States people just assume that Nebraska is not a very culturally diverse area yes. and yet we're seeing that that's really not true that it's really changing a great deal that's, exactly that's interesting right. okay so let's address this idea of health disparities what in your office are you seeing as the largest health disparities and what does that mean you know when we look at health disparities um, especially among women since this program is really targeted towards women cancer heart disease and stroke are the um, are what women are dying from um, those are the leading causes of death among women. Okay, and that is true of the ethnic minorities as well? Correct, correct. Okay. That is true, it, it, it kind of varies depending on the what you're looking at, because cancer um, is highest among, if we look at a chart here, cancer is highest among Asian and Hispanic uh, women, and then um, heart disease, is highest among white women, African American women, and Native American women. So it kind of varies, but those are the three top leading causes okay. of death. Okay. And so, what what is what are we finding about health disparities? What are some of the other areas that you have done some research on? I know that you mentioned just now the cause of death. What mm -hmm. else do you look at mm -hmm. when you talk well, we about health at, disparities? We also look at the incidence. How often are they um, diagnosed with like diabetes or cardiovascular disease as well? So we do have reports that we um, uh, create that tells individuals about the, um, the incidents as well. Okay, and so do you see a lot of difference then among the different groups? Yeah, we do. You know, there's uh, oftentimes you see um, among, especially among African American women and Hispanic women, lack of physical activity, which of course would result in obesity and also cardiovascular disease risks as well. So we also okay. look at the risks. Okay, and what causes the differences? You know, there's a lot of um, different things that causes it. Sometimes uh, uh, one of the largest could be lack of um, access to health care. We've seen that health, the education is a huge indicator of your health as well. So uh, we are seeing that unfortunately um, less individuals from racial ethnic minority populations uh, graduate from high school and that has a, a huge effect on your health. Income does uh, play a huge factor so, where you live. and So income has a lot to do with it. Yes, it Access does. to health care, probably deal, dealing with income, which Correct. you know is often directly correlated to the amount of education yes, one has. Exactly. And, and perhaps even insurance. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that insurance plays a big part of that. Correct. Correct. A lot of times, um, transportation, translation services. So sometimes people don't have access to um, health care, just not just because of income, but for other reasons as well. Sure. And those are we call those um, socioeconomic factors that come into play in health disparities. Sure, that makes sense. Now I noticed on one of your charts that you talk about infant m uh, mortality, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. what did mm -hmm. you what What are some of the statistics related to that? You know, in a report that we did with um, the Office of Women's Health. A, it's called the Women's uh, Health Equity Report, and we did that last year. We have uh, shown that infant mortality, it's uh, very important that kids get seen in their first trimester of care. But um, as you can see, the um, minority women have a higher rate of infant mortality. Mm -hmm. So we really have to make sure that we are getting a health education to women to get into see a doctor as soon as they can. As soon as they can because I'm seeing here and this is a report that we'll put up on the the camera but this shows here that that um, for the first trimester of prenatal care the all of those different groups are s decidedly lower Correct. than the white population. Yes. That's so that's critical then, getting women to get into getting some prenatal care mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. they go yes. very much farther. That's really a very key factor. I can see that that makes a huge difference. Another thing we try to focus on is prevention. You know, a lot of our programs are based on prevention, and that includes screening and education. So we really try to um, target women, especially minority women, to go in to get screening, mm -hmm. breast cancer, colon cancer, both women and men. So your office is 
not only ac accumulating this information, which is, is valuable information and important for all of us to know, but as well, you have lots of programs that you're trying to address these issues. Yes. Okay, so you're talking about screening. What are some of the other programs that you have? Let me talk a little bit about the core functions of our office. What we do is, um, one of the core functions that we do is we provide cultural competency, or we like to call it cultural intelligence training, because it's important to really understand the population that you're working with. Sure. And, you know, a lot of different factors can come into play when you are treating them. So we provide cultural intelligence trainings to healthcare professionals. We also provide um, data and all the reports that we publish, as I mentioned earlier, we try to provide um, information on the incidence and prevalence of these um, uh, diseases as well as the leading causes of death so that we can provide programs to address those, but other organizations can as well. So if someone knows what those issues are, then they can also be proactive in trying to design Correct. some programs of their own. Correct. The other thing that our office does is that we try to provide health education to these populations. One way we do that is through our staff that are community health educators. So they go out and give presentations to the community just about, um, could be about diabetes, cardiovascular disease, a screening, you know how often you should do it but we also work with what's called lay health ambassadors or community health workers so these individuals are individuals that are in the community they're um, racial and thick minorities they're bilingual bicultural and so they go out we train them then they go out and give presentations to their community so maybe if it was difficult for a community or an organization to target a certain populations, these individuals go to the churches, the local churches, they go to those local stores and they know how to um, gather those populations to give presentations or they may know of a group that already meets and they can go provide this information to them. That's a really good idea. Yeah. yeah. They might not be as willing to come to you, but exactly. they certainly would be appreciative of educators who come to them. Correct. That's Correct. great. Correct. Another That's really thing great. that we do is we really try to build and enhance our partnerships with organizations that are working with racial and ethnic minorities. So we work very closely with health departments, the um, university systems here in Nebraska to try to improve the health of minorities. And so we try to build those partnerships however we can. So here in Lincoln and Lancaster County, um, since we're kind of talking about Nebraska as a whole, mm -hmm. are you seeing the same? kinds of results in Lincoln and Lancaster County that you see across the state? Results with our programs? Well, or just with the overall situation, mm. like some of these areas, they're they're pretty much mirrored in Lincoln and Lancaster County as they are across the state. Yes, they are. Although we do have community health centers in Nebraska, we don't have them in all, you know, the sectors of the state. So for some individuals, we um, do see um, lower health outcomes because of that, because so they can't get too We healthy. might be able to have a little bit better access to some of those health programs that you're talking about in Lincoln and Lancaster County compared to people who live in the western part of the state who might live pretty far from a population center and then they are not able to find like a people's health clinic or Correct. something like that. One other thing though that our office does is we oversee what's called the Minority Health Initiative funding and that funding was um, provided to our office through the tobacco settlement dollars that the state got clear back oh, in sure. 2001. Mm -hmm. In addition to Nebraska creating um, health departments across the state, they also provided some dollars for uh, minorities for minority health. And so what they did is that um, each county that has five or, or more percent minority populations gets a certain amount of money. And so that money goes to organizations that serve those counties to improve minority health. So we have those across the entire state. We have them in um, here in Lincoln, South Sioux City, Hall County, Dawson County. Last year we funded about um, 18 projects. And not all of them were just for one county. Some of them actually encompassed maybe six counties, two counties, sure. so they vary. Um, but we provide the, those dollars to not only um, racial and thick minority populations, but also that includes tribal, tribal uh, funding as well. So, um, and one particular project, since we're talking about Lancaster County, is um, the, um, those dollars go to the Lincoln-Lancaster County Health Department. And what that project does is they uh, really try to help individuals find a medical home. It's really important for individuals to have a medical home. Um, that is also um, something good as far as health outcomes, improving so health outcomes. Now when you're saying medical home, you're meaning a regular physician or a health center or someplace where they go on a regular basis Correct. where all their records are kept so Correct. everyone knows. Correct. 
what they've had done. Correct. Right. Yes. Okay. That's a that's an, a really important issue. It is getting to some place where you know where your records are. People know who you are, mm -hmm. have followed your health history, and can kind of watch for some of those preventative things as well as for treatments. Exactly. Another thing that Lincoln Lancaster County Health Department is doing is that they also make sure that the cultural centers are involved in their project. So they work with the Asian Center, the um, uh, Clyde Malone Center, and El Centro to really try to conduct outreach with minority populations. So if somebody comes into Malone Center and they don't have a um, medical home and they're in need of health services, then they will refer them on to maybe People's Health Center or somewhere else. Right, or get them at least in some, some contact with exactly. what kind of health services that they need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's an important issue, I think. Now let's talk a little bit about what this means to the community at large. I mean, we're talking about health disparities and obviously for the targeted population, mm -hmm. it makes a lot of difference, but what is the, the impact on the community at large? I, mean, I think it's a huge impact, Kathy, if um, individuals aren't, be able, aren't able to take care of their health and they have, um, their condition gets worsened, they're gonna have to go to the emergency room and then that's gonna be a huge impact on all of us financially. The other thing is, is that um, if we do not, um, have individuals that have graduated from high school or aren't, ab aren't able to uh, further their education, then we'll have a, um, a society that, that has poor health, mm -hmm. which will affect all of us. Right. You know, one thing that um, we can all do is, you know, there are programs out there where you can mentor children to help them stay in school. There's a lot of different um, programs through um, Lincoln Public Schools, teammates programs, other programs that you can go and actually help kids stay in school so that we can see them graduate. Because as we said earlier, uh, education is a huge factor in, in our health. Right, exactly. And, and I think that it is really important for people to understand that the, the collective health of our community is everyone's business. It's everyone's, it's important to everybody not just because of the financial regions, although there's certainly a lot of financial impact on a community, but also for the well-being of the whole community in the sense that Lincoln has always been sort of a, a model yes. for health and fitness and you know education and all those kinds of things and to attract people to come to Lincoln and want to stay here that sort of overall feeling of, of good health and good feelings is, is important for all of us. Correct, you know, when you talk about that too, Kathy, that reminds me of um, the environmental piece also plays a factor in our health. Because if you don't have um, safe places to walk, if you don't have you know lights, or if you don't have uh, parks that your kids can go to, they're gonna be less active. And so um, that's important too when we think about health, uh, health outcomes and how everything affects everything. Everything Income, affects everything. Environment, exactly. Right, you wouldn't think about mm -hmm. sidewalks, and yet sidewalks does play a part of it, and okay. clean air, and even recycling in the way that we use our resources all has to do with the collective health of the community. Correct. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention that our office is doing is that we are, in our um, strategic plan, we're focusing on obesity. And one of the areas is childhood obesity. And we are actually, uh, we have a program that we work with. We purchase these kits. And so we go to organizations and offer these kits to them so that they can work with after school programs. And it targets kids from um, third grade to sixth grade so that we can try to lower that incidence of obesity in right, Nebraska. Right, Well, and I think there's been a, a big ish initiative among young children, particularly in the elementary schools, I've noticed, to get them out and moving and active and yes. putting in walking tracks and things like that. And I think we kind of always took that for granted, and now with the technological age, there's lots less of, less of kids getting out there and playing and that okay. kind of thing. Okay, so now, if people want to know more information, where can they get that information? What I mean, we've shown some things on the screen, which is really helpful, but what else can they do? They can go to our website. If they um, just Google Nebraska Health and Human Services, Office of Health Disparities and Health Equity, they can go to our website. We will put our information um, at the end of this program as well, where people can go. We have many reports, as I stated earlier, that they can go if they're interested in looking at 
um, the disparities, they can look at those, but they can sure contact our office if they're interested in uh, maybe providing a program to some of the youth that they work with, or if they would like us to come out and give a cultural intelligence uh, presentation, we can do that. Or if they're interested in being one of our community health educators or health uh, workers, I should say, they um, we can do that as well. So now the health educators, that's a paid position? The health educators is a paid position. Okay. The community health workers is a volunteer position, but we do pay individuals to actually, we give them a stipend to go out and give those presentations. So it wouldn't have to be someone who it wants a job, but necessarily just someone who wants to volunteer and Correct. to be part of this. Oh, Correct. That's great. Correct. That's fantastic because I'm guessing some of our audience might be interested in helping out, but probably not as a job necessarily, but yes. as a volunteer. That's exactly that's right. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's great. Well, thank you again. You're welcome. This is Josie Rodriguez, and I want to just put a point in here that Josie is also one of our commissioners on the Women's Commission, so we're very proud of that. But also, she is the administrator of the Office of Public or Health Disparities Correct. and Health Equity. Health Equity. I want to make sure I get that that right which is a division of pu public health. And we want to thank again the Nebraska Department of Health and S Human Services for helping to fund this today, this important and, and, and valuable information. If you are interested in any of the programs that we do on women's health, you can either access them here on Channel 10 Health or you can go to our website, which is lincolnwomen.org. And we will also try to put a link to this information on our website so women can look at that too. And we thank you again for joining us today on Women's Health. Thank you.